The Lover's Litanies, Second Litany, Vox Amoris, 1, by Eric McKay I, Vouchsafe, My Lady, by the Passion Flower, and by the Glamour of a Moonlit Hour, and by the Cries and Sighs of all the Birds that Sing O Nights, to heed again the words of my poor pleading. For I swear to thee my love is deeper than the bounding sea, and more conclusive than a wedding bell, and freer voiced than winds upon the lee. Footnote 1. This litany was introduced in the author's, Gladys the Singer, published by Messrs. Reeves and Turner, London, 1887. E. In all the world, from east unto the west, there is no vantage ground, and little rest, and no content for me from dawn to dark, from set of sun to song time of the lark, and yet, withal, there is no man alive who for a goodly cause to make it thrive, would do such deeds as I would gird me to could I but win the pearl for which I dive. E. It is thy love which, downward in the deep of far-off visions, I behold in sleep, it is thy pearl of love which in the night doth tempt my soul to hopes I dare not write, it is this gem for which, had I a crown, I'd barter peace and pomp, an airman gown, it is thy troth, thou paragon of maids, for which I'd sell the joys of all renown, I v. I would attack a panther in its den to do thee service as thy man of men, or front the fates, or, like a ghoul, confer with staring ghosts outside a sepulchre. I would forego a limb to give thee life, or yield my soul itself in any strife, in any coil of doubt, in any spot when death and danger meet as man and wife, v. It is my solace, all my nights and days, to pray for thee and dote on thee always, and evermore to count myself a king because the first earned thy favor in the spring. Oh, smile on me and call me to thy side, and I will kneel to thee, as to a bride, and yet adore thee as a saint in heaven by God ordained, by good men glorified, v. I will acquaint thee with mine inmost thought and teach thee all I know, though unbesought, and make thee prouder of a poet's dream than wealthy men are proud of what they seem. If thou have trust therein, if thou require service of me, or song, or penance dire, I will obey thee as thy belted knight, or die to satisfy thy heart's desire. V. Ah, thou hast that in store which none can give, none but thyself, and I am fain to live to watch the outcome of so fair a gift, to see the bright good morrow loom and lift, and know that thou, unpeered beneath the moon, untamed of men, untutored to the tune of lip with lip, wilt cease thy coy disdain and learn the languors of the loves of June. V. All that I am, and all I hope to be, is thine till death, and though I die for thee each day I live, and though I throb and thrill at thoughts that seem to burn me, and to chill, in my dark hours, I revel in the same. Yet I am free of hope, as thou of blame, and all around me, wakeful and in sleep, I weave a blessing for thy soul to claim. Ix. O, oh, by thy radiant hair and by the glow of thy full eyes, and by thy breast of snow, and by the buds thereof that have the flush of infant roses when they strive to blush, and by thy voice, melodious as a bell that rings for prayer in God's high citadel, by all these things, and more than I can urge, I charge thee, sweet, to let me out of hell. X. Is it not hell to live so far? Away and not to touch thee, not by night or day to be partaker of one smile of thine, or one comingling of thy breath and mine, or one encounter of thine amorous mouth. I dwell apart from thee, as north from south, as east from western ways I dwell apart, and taste the tears that quench not any drouth. She. Why wouldst thou take, the memory of a wrong to be thy shadow all the summer long, a thing to chide thee at the dead of night, a thing to wake thee with the morning light for self-upbraiding, while the wanton bird invests the welkin? Ah, by joy deferred, by peace withheld from me, do thou relent and dower my life today with one love word. She. Wouldst thou, Cassandra wise, oppress my soul with more unrest, and hebbock like, the bowl of festal comfort for a moment raised to my poor lips, and then avert thy gaze? Wouldst make me mad beyond the daily curse of thy displeasure, and in wrath disperse that halcyon draught, that nectar of the mind, which is the theme I yearn to in my verse? She, oh, by thy pity when so slight a thing as some small bird is wounded in the wing, avert thy scorn, and grant me, from afar, at least the right to love thee as a star, the right to turn to thee, the right to bow to thy pure name and evermore, as now, to own thy thraldom and to sing thereon, in proud allegiance to mine earliest vow, XIV. It were abuse of power to frown again when, all day long, I gloat upon the pain of pent-up hope, my joy and my distress, while the remembrance of a mute caress given to a rose, a rose I plucked for thee, seems as the withering of the world to me, because I am unloved of thee today and undesired as 
Seaweeds in the sea. XV. I'll not believe that eyes so bright as thine were meant for malice in the summer shine, or that a glance thereof, though changed to fire, could injure one whose spirit, like a lyre, has throbbed to music of remembered joys, the pride thereof, and all the tender poise of trust with trust, the symphonies of grief made all mine own, and faith which never cloys, XVI. How can it be that one so fair as thou should wear contention on a wider brow than Mayday Dian's in her hunting gear? I'll not believe that eyes so wholly clear in mouth so constant to its morning prayer could mock the mischief of a man's despair and all the misery of a moment's hope seen far away, as mists are seen in air. XVII. How can a woman's heart be made of stone and she not know it? Mine is overthrown. I have no heart today, no perfect one, only a thing that sighs at set of sun and beats its cage, as if the thrall thereof were freedom's prison or the tomb of love, as if, God help me, there were shame in truth and no salvation left in realms above. XVIII. I once could laugh, I once was deemed a man fit for the frenzies of the dead god Pan, and now, by heaven, the birds that sing so well move me to tears, and all the leafy dell, and all the sundown glories of the west, and all the moorland which the moon has. Blessed, make me a dreamer, I, a coward, too, in all the weird expanse of mine unrest. Exix. It is my curse to see thee and to learn that I must shun thee, though I blaze and burn with all this longing, all this fierce delight fear fraught and famished for a suitor's right, a right conceded for a moment's space and then withdrawn. As, amorous face to face, I dared to clasp thee and to urge a troth too sovereign sweet for one of Adam's race, xx. I am a doom-entangled mirthless soul, without the power to rid me of the dole which, day by day, and nightly evermore corrodes my peace. Oh, smile, as once before, at each wild thought and each discarded plea, and let thy sentence, let thy sufferance be that I be reckoned till the day I die the sad-eyed singer of thy fame and thee.